வெல்கம் டு மை கோர்ஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் டெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் ஃபைன் டியூனிங் ஆர்டிஃபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் லார்ஜ் லாங்குவேஜ் மாடல்ஸ் வித் த பவர் ஆஃப் நேச்சுரல் லாங்குவேஜ் ப்ராசஸிங் லைப்ரரி ஹகிங் ஃபேஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் த ஃபஸ்ட் எவர் கோர்ஸ் விட் ஹேஸ் காட் சோ மெனி இன்ஃபர்மேஷன்ஸ் அபவுட் தி பவர் ஆஃப் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபார்மர் மாடல்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹவு வீ கேன் யூஸ் தி நேச்சுரல் லாங்குவேஜ் லைப்ரரி டு ட்ரைன் த மாடல் டெஸ்ட் த மாடல் அண்ட் ஃபைன் ட்யூன் த மாடல் யூசிங் ஹகிங் ஃபேஸ் லைப்ரரி Well as that said this course starts from the complete basic and cover all the important nitty gritty details of the transformer models and working with the transformer models and finally end with the fine tuning of the artificial intelligence model so the agenda of the course looks something like this we start off with discussing the introduction to machine learning and understand the fundamental concept of machine learning and then we'll be working with the natural language processing like sentiment analysis fill mask name entity recognition question and answering and more and then we'll go and talk about the understanding of the natural language libraries even in depth with the power of hugging face pipeline functions and then we're talking about how to work with the different large language models in open ai cloud sonnet local large language models and how we can empower ourselves with these models and then we'll be talking about the testing phase of these models by starting off with the functional testing of the artificial intelligence models and then bias and fairness testing of the model evaluating how the model performs during a training and how the model really behaves or predicts based on a given text and then we'll talk about the agenetic agents which is really making the headlines in 2025 taking the large language model to the next level by empowering everyone with the agenetic agents and finally after getting all the fundamental details of the large language models in the transformer libraries we then will start off with the fine tuning of the artificial intelligence model where we'll be talking about using a base model applying the model head and the classification head on the model and finally fine tune the model train the model and create a local large language model which can be used for inferencing purpose we'll then also try to upload this model to the hugging face library so that anyone in the world can start using the library from their machine and also we'll be talking about how we can compare different models with the different architectures and test and see how and which model can be useful for our purpose in using these models well as i said at the end of this course you will have a solid understanding of what the transformer models are how to build your own custom language model and how to upload the language model and evaluate and test these models by your own well as that said let's talk about what is machine learning and understand how machine learning really works well Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence that enables machine to learn patterns from data and make decisions without being explicitly programmed. Unlike traditional programming where instructions are manually coded, in machine learning system machines will learn and adapt from the examples and experiences and the huge data set that we give to that particular machine so that way machine starts learning the data that is what is machine learning in a nutshell but how can a machine learn by itself because you have told me karthik that machine learns from patterns and data to make decisions but how does this machine starts learning by itself Well before we get there let's first understand the history of what happened to get to this point of machine learning because machine learning is not something that just started in a day or two or maybe in a year or two it just started all the way long for pretty long time and the breakthrough started happening all the way from 2013 so we can split this entire history in two era to be honest one is the pre transformer era and another one is the transformer era so what is this pre transformer era well if you see in 2013 through 2017 something really interesting started happening there and one of them was the word to vector which was from the google paper and this was starting to set as a stone for evolution of the machine learning i would say and from 2017 there started happening this transformer era all the way 
through till now, which is 2025, where we are seeing quite a lot of different breakthroughs happening. But you can see that is all happened from this paper called as attention is all you need. We'll talk about this attention is all you need paper in more detail while we get there. But at least now you can see that these are the two things that we need to know about. One is the pre-transformer era and another one is the transformer era. So let's take a bit more depth of this pre-transformer era to be honest. The one is the word to wick paper introduced in 2013 on efficient estimation of word representation in vector space. This was mainly telling us that a continuous word embedding started being created to more accurately identify the semantic meaning and similarity of words. So the machine started to identify using the vector space of how it can identify the semantic meanings and similarity of the words while they start creating its sentences. But still, this paper was not telling like how big the sentence needs to be and how much the machine can maintain the semantic meanings. That was something which was still in a very early stage and the machine was not there yet. But the word to vec paper was actually a stepping stone for the current general purpose model that we are using today. And the next one is in 2015, while sequence to sequence approach to text generation paper was released in a neural conversational model. And this model started to tell something which was already using the same word to vector paper, but building on the top of it and told that it can now take the potential power of the deep learning neural network to learn semantic and syntactic information from large amount of unstructured data. So in here with the word to vector, you can see that maybe it's like few paragraphs of data was something the machine could able to get the context and get the semantic meaning and similarity of the word. But with the sequence to sequence, it started to grab quite a lot of amount of data and the data can be an unstructured text, but it could start getting the similarity and syntactic information out from there. That's when the sequence to sequence approach was starting to gaining more popularity in 2015. But that's all on the pre-transformer era. But still, there was something most importantly missing in all these approaches. And it's all started to make more sense while the transformer era came in from 2017. And in that era, the transformer model such as GPT, BERT, BART, and T5 took significant leap forward after the release of the groundbreaking paper Attention is All You Need in 2017. And these models are trained using self-supervised learning techniques on extensive text data set, which allow them to automatically determine objectives from input data. And this process effectively removes the necessity of manual data labeling by humans. That is where the self-supervised learning technique came into picture. And again, I've really not talked about the attention is all you need paper in 2017, but this was the stepping stone and a groundbreaking paper for the entire model that we are using today. So what is this self-supervised learning technique then? Well, self-supervised learning is a type of training in which the objective is automatically computed from the input of the model. This means that the humans are not needed to label the large amount of data. Instead, the model uses the data itself to create labels or learning signals, which is cool because now you can see that the machine starts to label data by itself. Let's say this is cat, the machine labels that this is an animal and it has four legs, it is fluffy and has got two air and it is used as a pet animal. So it can start labeling that with this particular cat, it can have these many properties in it. Similarly, if it takes dog, then it knows that, okay, dog is also a pet animal. It has got four legs. It is also fluffy in some of the dog breeds and it can live with human beings and it is also pretty similar to this ancestor of wolf and then you can go on labeling from there. So you can see that all these labels are done by the machine itself using the self-supervised fashion with automatically computing all the input data. And the self-supervised learning of a model develops a statistical understanding of the language it has been trained on, but it's not very useful for specific practical 
task. Well, I say it is not really useful for a specific practical task. That's when we need to give even more head of information to the model. Well, I say head, don't worry about it yet because we're going to talk about how we can create some model heads and stuff while we start fine tuning the model in our upcoming section of this course. But for now, this is what is self-supervised learning. I also told that the self-supervised learning model will not be very useful for a specific practical task. For instance, maybe you have got a model which is trained with a large set of data from a medical data, but it is not trained with the social data of a person. Then how do you make this model to learn about the social data by also having a medical data, for instance, all the medical records and stuff. So how do you make that model to learn that? And again, if you want to create another new model with all the medical information as well as the social information or maybe some computer knowledge or coding knowledge, all of these knowledge to be trained every single time, instead of you doing this way, you can train based on specific head of the models training. And that we can achieve using what is called as a transfer learning. So during this process, the model is fine-tuned in a supervisory way that is using a human annotated labels on a given task and also the transfer learning will transfer the learning of a specific task to the existing model so that you don't let the model learn things again and again from the beginning. That's how this transfer learning really works. I know it's a lot of things in the first lecture of this particular course but this all will start making you more sense when we start talking even more about this in our upcoming lectures of this course. But now you know how a machine starts learning by itself with the power of transformer and also let's explore more about transformer in our next chapter.